So, we can't avoid this. This week, possibly the biggest game trailer release of all time, Grand Theft Auto 6 Trailer 1 was revealed. We've done a reaction video to it and it was kind of like in the heat of the moment stuff. Um, we didn't actually have the opportunity to uh, ask our supporters to put forward questions. And man, there are a lot of questions about the, about the trailer, despite quite a lot being revealed, I think. And um, yeah, basically we've asked our supporters whether they've got any questions that they want to see discussed. But I think there's a couple of things which uh, just generally, I think we might like to talk about a bit more. And um, we kind of talked about it, or rather you guys talked about it at the end. Um, there's two things that are really sort of dominating discussion. First of all, the Xbox Series S side of things. And secondly, the whole 60 FPS side of things. And um, I think that kind of two things that are intertwined almost, that we should probably just sort of uh, get out of the way. And I think, you know, you guys probably hit the nail on the head in the, in the, in the content, but um, let's first of all talk about the Series S side of things because, um, well, it's been announced for Series S. It's not a case of of if but when and um yeah i mean did you see anything in that trailer that you think is beyond the series s because i don't think i did alex thoughts i i mean if if the game is using ray trace reflections and ray trace gi it wouldn't be necessarily cutting gi out of the game that that would be obscene too it would much make a completely different game it's too just not what they do but like you know like when i think of ue5 titles on series s how they get rid of like the reflection aspect of the gi and they replace it with ssr that is mm, a bit more reasonable and i could see things like cuts like that on series s and then just the rest of the cuts we've seen for the generation so far much lower internal resolution i would not doubt 720p or even a little bit lower if it's dynamic res and you know cuts down to any of the areas where like memory is a big concern so textures uh, maybe unique objects in areas and things like that. But I didn't see anything here where I thought this is a step too far for Series S based upon what we've seen so far about how games are degraded for that console already. Mm, yeah. Mm. Um, anything to add to that, Oliver? Yeah, I actually took a look at some Unreal Engine 5 re uh, games recently on Series S and compared them. Right. And actually the results were pretty good. In some titles like Robocop, you saw, like Alex said, the removal of um, traced reflections from the game. And in other titles, you saw the removal in, in one title, The Talos Principle 2, there was actually the removal of Ray Trace GI, which they kind of yeah, just... Yeah, that was not great. Weird, but... Uh, it was so yeah, weird, yeah. We did, didn't work out that well <laughs> in that title, and I, I certainly would hope that for GTA that wouldn't be the approach, but I think that reflections could be taken out of the game without fundamentally altering the basic visual characteristics of the title. Going down mm -hmm. to a very low resolution, again, I, I would prefer a game that is a little bit blurrier and that retains the essential visual character of, of the game. And I think, you know, when you look at fallbacks, when you think about fallbacks, you know, re-arting a game and adding in a bunch of, you know, fill lights or whatever mm -hmm. for a game like the Talos Principle, totally doable. For a game like Grand Theft Auto 6, way harder. <laughs> so right. uh, yeah. I, I think it probably will maintain um, visual feature set parity just at a low resolution, which I think is fine for people who own that console. That, that should be acceptable. Yeah, I mean, the more I think about it, and I think we've said this several times over the years, I don't really have a problem with the power of the Series S. You know, the 4 teraflop versus 12 teraflop thing gets sort of dragged out time and time again. Um, I don't think that, you know, that's not the problem. The memory side of things is far more challenging, I think, because it's such a big cut that actually defines the way the game is developed in many ways. You know, certain... There are certain things which can obviously scale, like texture quality, for example. Uh, ray tracing, though, you know, that's that's kind of like has fixed cost um, almost. I mean, obviously right. it can be simplified, but, you know, to add ray tracing basically means that you're going to be adding a certain amount of, you know, a, a degree of memory requirement. And I think, you know, looking back, I, I guess it was probably the right move in getting a machine out at $299.00. But, you know, available memory on, on PlayStation 5 for developers, 12.5 gigs, 13 gigs on Series X. And then you're dropping down to an indeterminate number on Xbox Series S, which initially was eight gigabytes, right? But then yeah. um, Microsoft came out and said that they've actually added um, uh, some additional memory available to, um, to, to, to Series S developers. I've, 
actually looked into this a bit more and it looks as though a static chunk of extra memory was given to Series S. So it, you're taking it beyond the eight gigabytes. And then there are various little tweaks that developers can make to claw back extra memory beyond that, but it is in the tens of megabytes range. It's not going to be you know, massively meaningful to scaling down the project aiming at 12.5 to 13 gigs. So, you know, I think memory management is, is probably the bigger challenge because graphics are inherently scalable. And elsewhere, the Series S has got the storage, same storage as Series S, effect, as X effectively. Mm -hmm. And, you know, graphics can scale quite easily. Um, <laughs> I say easily, I guess it depends <laughs> really on how, how well it looks when you've when you only got that. It down, yeah. 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 You know, Avatar has just come out, state of the art visuals, and I played it on Series S this morning. It's 30 FPS, but it's but it's great. And I guess actually that sort of leads us on to the other sort of FAQ that keeps coming along. You guys effectively ruled out 60 frames per second, um, and a lot of people weren't happy about that. But come on, I mean, by the time this game comes out, it's gonna be 2025. Five years into the development, sorry, into the lifespan of the uh, of the current generation of consoles, if you're going to be pushing technological boundaries on a fixed platform that is, you know, so old at that point, it's kind of, you know, you've you've got to accept some level of compromise, right? Is there anything more to add to that discussion, Alex? Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, if you want, so as part of getting games into this current generation where we had this longer cross-gen period, 60 FPS titles made a lot of sense because the games were still being developed for Xbox One and PS4 with significantly weaker CPU resources there. And you could use that extra CPU power afforded by the Zen 2 processors in these machines like Series X, Series, a PlayStation 5 usually, to bring that up to 60. But as soon as you want to start actually improving aspects of the world beyond that which we saw in the previous generation, like we, you know, these Rockstar tend to do this. That's the thing. They've done it every single time they release a game. I don't think they've released a 60 FPS game that wasn't a remaster ever. Right. Um, Table so, tennis? So yeah, wow. There we go. Rockstar's <laughs> okay. table tennis. Was that billiards? <laughs> Didn't they have a billiards game? Am I making things up here? <laughs> Two um, games, then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that are 60 FPS. So, like, in terms of open world games, then let's say I don't think they do that. Um, I forgot table tennis existed. That's amazing. And so I think when you want to start increasing simulation aspects or density aspects of a game world and have that be a defining part of the game then you start thinking that 30 FPS makes a lot more sense on a target platform. And I really would imagine that's part of the game design. I would be genuinely shocked, and I like being shocked and being wrong if it is offers a 60 FPS mode, but I just don't think they would do it off the bat. It could maybe compromise too much of what they're trying to achieve. So I don't know, but that's what yeah. I, I feel like that's a reasonable take though. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the suborder questions because we got a bunch of them. The first one's from Alan. Hi, guys. Exclamation point. One would assume GTA 6 is playable at 30 FPS on PS5 and Series X. Unsure about <laughs> Series X. I think I think it will be playable. Hopefully. Um, yeah. Yeah. But my, Microsoft... Uh, but Microsoft will insist, exclamation point, but PCs who have pretty much surpassed the consoles in 2025. Will be a PC port be that far off? Also, what about Switch 2 slash next Nintendo? Is a port possible? Uh, this is a really interesting point because by the time 2025 comes about, your typical gaming PC, I suspect, is probably going to have like twice the CPU power of, <laughs> right. of the consoles. And, you know, uh, we've reached a point now where 4060 is comparable to, a, to you know, a PlayStation 5. That's your sort of gaming entry level point, really, arguably, for many, many people. Um, what do you think, Alex? The PC port is, would it be that far off? I mean, it's going to, there's just, you know, you, you just can't really say, can you? In theory, it should be, it could have gone out simultaneously, but that's just not the way Rockstar operate. Yeah, I, after just coming off of Avatar once again, it, it proves very easily that with enough resources and the right developer mindset, a PC version of a game can come out alongside the console versions and not suffer. In fact, it can excel in ways that are just kind of ridiculous. So 
I think it is not a given that you need more time to do a PC port. Rather, you just need like the, you know, like the proper planning, the, the effort, the resources to do these things. Mm. In their case, I don't think it's a matter of Rockstar probably don't have limited resources in this capacity. <laughs> Uh, uh, right. And they also don't have limited time because they've been working on this for an eternity already. Um, so I don't think it's really that. I think it is a lot of the the cadence of the release that they adhere to. Um, I, and I, it sounds so negative, but I think they've learned in the past that people will buy the game twice. So they're definitely going to do that. Uh, and I saw a lot of comments under our videos when people, by the way, just so everyone knows, most of the things I said in that video were said in jest. I, I'm not going to play the game in 2038, for example. That was a joke. You know, like most, of, I think most of us were just joking that entire thing. Like we didn't say almost anything serious other than like commenting on how the graphical quality was great, right? So, but yeah, you're uh, being picked up on that, Alex. Yes, I am. So, uh, as we as we go into that time, like, uh, I would I would definitely wait to play the game because especially if it is 30 FPS on console, I'd really love to see it at 60 FPS on PC. And given Rockstar's uh, past behavior in this regard, like the released Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 with a like a really great set of um, PC enhancements, where that is the way I would love to experience the game on a mouse and keyboard. So that's the way I would definitely wait to play it. Uh, but by that time, man, you're right, Rich. Like. Entry level CPU on PC is going to be really beast in comparison to what you have in those consoles, and the the, the mid range GPU at that time is also going to be really great, especially in terms of feature set. Like if you're getting mm -hmm. the NVIDIA stuff, you're going to be getting DLSS frame right. gen. You're going to get be getting uh, DLSS quality, which is just superior. You, you know, you're going to have a lot of extra stuff in there just by virtue of the platform. So I think that is, it's totally worth it to wait. And I don't think it'll be longer than a year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Um, well, there is the other part of Alan's question, which is uh, switch to next Nintendo. And again, obviously the, the specifications for this are kind of not known. We've got a pretty good idea. Um, I don't know. This is, this is going to be very, very tricky to pull off. And you'll note that even on Switch 1, Rockstar have been quite, selective about the games that they ported to it mm -hmm. so you know red dead redemption one for example uh you know it's effectively a a game from the ps360 generation right i i'd love to say it would happen don't don't think it will yeah realistically it's a mobile mobile chipset i mean we've seen a lot of amazing things on the switch one Switch 2 is going to be a lot better, a proper generational leap and forward looking in many ways. But the stuff that they seem to be rolling out for um, for GTA 6 is is possibly beyond that. Do you have anything to add to that, Oliver? Yeah, I think part of the problem here is you've got a lighting model that may not have a good non-RT fallback. And I really, you know, the Switch is not going to be powerful enough to run all that ray tracing. I just cannot see it. And mm -hmm. in a world like this, you've got a big world with very complex CPU demands. And you look at any of the scenes in this trailer with all those uh, NPCs around the environment. And then imagine what the typical GTA player is going to do when they're presented with a big crowd of entities and a bunch of right. cheat codes and stuff, right? And yeah. it's just like <laughs> the level of simulation is just is, is quite something else. And uh, I don't think this, this Switch is going to be capable of, of that. Um, and I also would look back to the uh, Switch 1 and Rockstar's history on that machine because they shipped L.A. Noir on Switch back in 2017. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. They shipped Red Dead Redemption 1 in 2023. But even though GTA 5 on Switch would be an absolute money printing machine, I can guarantee it. And even though they have Rage running on the Switch clearly in quite good right. form, they didn't port GTA 5 to Switch. I have no idea why. <laughs> Honestly, it seems like the most easy decision in the world to me um mm. but if they didn't ship gta 5 on switch one why gta 6 on switch 2 which is a, a device that's going to struggle i think a lot more relative to its uh, capabilities there yeah absolutely yeah it seems a, a step beyond and out of character with what we know about 
blocks and RZMO. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting question, though, nonetheless. Let's move on to the next one from uh, Tamer Escander. Hello, DF crew. When GTA 6 uh, releases in 2025, it will allegedly be in development for more than a decade. How do large game studios like Rockstar manage to stay at the bleeding edge of technology and keep evolving their engine assets and gameplay for such a long period of time? The last game that comes to mind that took over a decade to develop was Duke Nukem Forever. And we all know how that turned out. Uh, thanks. Uh, well, it, this is actually an interesting question about the length of um, game development uh, these days. I mean, 10 years is an outlier, obviously. But, you know, a lot of games are taking five years to develop now and they're still at the technological cutting edge. You know, you look at a game like, you know, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn back in the day. You know, that was a, a six-year development, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it launched and it was it was pushing the PlayStation hard. Um I think it's quite interesting to talk about the, how games are developed because, you know, obviously there's you know, things evolve over time. They aren't set in stone. Right. Uh, I would love to say that game development tends to be iterative. You don't work on one level and get it up to release quality and then work yeah. on all the mm-hmm. other levels. There's a combination of departments working and iterating in their own right on their own specific subtasks. Uh, and then it comes together in the end as a full package. And I think that is what allows games to look th- th- right by the time of their release. With a game like uh, Duke Nukem Forever, that's a game that went cold for long periods of time. It yep. wasn't constantly mm-hmm. being worked on. And that's why it has its what happened then and the way it looks and the way it feels. like It feels like a joke from like a decade earlier. And that's that's like... You know, like that happens in games, and I think it. Uh, the the more resources a studio has, then the the greater the chance is that when a game comes out, during you know whenever it comes out, that it's going to look close to its peers. Sometimes you have games that fall a little bit behind in some aspects, and that usually points then at something with the development, and less so, um, you know, some other factor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's a constantly iterative process, right? And um, you know, games can change dramatically over time, but you know, there's also the fact that you know, if a game is in development for for ten years, you know, it's it's obvious that certain parts of its development are going to be tackled later on, right? Mm-hmm. I think what's quite interesting is that the leaks for GTA Six that were present earlier um, this year, I think it was this year. They basically gave no real indication of the technology that we'd be seeing in the final game, and you know, there's there's various ways that game systems are actually tested and and prototyped, and you know, it's, it doesn't really you know correlate to to what the final product will be. I guess when the, the Last of Us Part Two comes out, the remastered version with those sort of prototype levels, you'll get an idea of how basic things can be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, certainly an interesting stuff, uh, interesting sort of insight into the way games are developed. Um, but yeah, there isn't sort of like a uh, a dedication to producing the the final finished product, you know, in a serial manner. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I'd also say that just because the game has been in development for like an obscenely long time, doesn't mean it's been full act production for that long. Like I right. think GTA Six probably entered yeah. full production at some point after Red Dead Redemption Two shipped. And also, you know, when we talk about game development timelines, you know, everyone is subject to similar timelines. Like, no one is shipping a game like Horizon Forbidden West in like a year and a half, like all AAA mm-hmm, games yeah. used to be. They're all taking at least four years, five years, pretty much, to develop outside of like Call of Duty. So, you know, everyone's kind of playing by the same timelines in terms of the progression of their technology. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, this one from uh, Ishrak. Uh, Does it now seem clear that the RT work given to Grand Theft Auto V on PS5 slash Xbox Series consoles was actually more of a test trial for implementing RT features in GTA 6? This would also explain why GTA 5 on PC did not receive the update, given there are no plans to receive to, to release GTA 6 on PC. Well, it's going to come to PC. There's no doubt about that. But this is an interesting conceit, isn't it, Oliver? Because you looked at the uh, RT effects on GTA 5. I did, What yeah. do you make of this question? Well, they added, yeah, they added RT reflections back in December 2022. And I think earlier in 2022, they added RT shadows. Um, I think absolutely those RT updates wouldn't have occurred 
if they weren't intent on continuing to develop the Rage engine for future titles. I don't think they make that investment without the intention to continue working on those techniques. I think it's probably also suggestive that some form of RT Shadows may arrive. If that's in consoles, probably not, but maybe on the PC version at some point. Mm -hmm, GTA right. 5 not getting uh, the graphical updates that we're talking about. I don't know. I think it's more of a case of Rockstar just doing things that are, you know, not not really explicable. <laughs> uh, may, maybe yeah. in their own minds, like they're thinking, hey, we have a PC version, you know, but we don't have a next-gen console version, so we're not going to bother with PC. Um, I don't think it's a case of them not shipping GTA 6 on PC. It would be very surprising to me if GTA 6 is not a PC title at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the uh, next question uh, from uh, Diego, Diego El Rey. The old GTA 6 gameplay leaks showed developer HUDs, which included the GPU in use. You could see things as old as the GTX 10 series. In those leaks, the game definitely did not have the lighting that it does now. As old as those leaks were, would it be safe to assume that age of hard that age of hardware is not going to run this game anymore? Also, when considering Series S con concessions, what could that mean for PC scaling? Uh, well, this is an interesting point, right, Alex? Because if we're talking about RTGI being mm -hmm. in use on uh, Grand Theft Auto 6, um, that kind of sets the floor for the kind of hardware that it, the PC version would need to run. And it also, some might say, it also has a profound effect on the actual development pipeline for lighting in the game itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you make of this? I mean, I'm, I mean... I, it, Diego's quite right. I mean, the lighting model in those leaks was nothing like what we were seeing in, in the trailer. I think this goes back to what you said earlier about prototyping, um, yeah. where we know, for example, this is, we actually know this from hundreds of games, but like you can start a gameplay prototype in a very bare bones version of the engine or a different engine entirely. People prototype in Unity for games to get like a gameplay concept down you can have a lot of things it could run on anything if you're just trying to if that if those leaks were about sh doing like some sort of ai test or maybe they were about doing one very specific tests it, stuff's like the witcher um no cyberpunk was originally started off in the version of red tech that was done for the witcher 3 right. and mm -hmm. it just had no bearing at all on the end product there what you eventually got so i wouldn't yeah. read anything into those leaks I haven't really even the seen Witcher them 3. too much. Yeah. Or the Witcher, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then the Witcher 3, Witcher. too. We know how that changed, too. They changed their yeah. GI solution because it just didn't work on consoles and for the full production of a game. So in this case, um, given the time frame when this is going to be coming out on PC, like I said, I'd imagine 2026 or something like that. Uh, this is so far in the future, but come on. Like, if you don't have an RT capable card by then, like, what are you doing? Like, this is so old. You'd have to have a, you'd either have to have a Radeon from 2019, which I don't think many people bought, or you'd have mm -hmm. to be still hugging that 2016 era technology. You'd have it for a decade. There's yeah, no Pascal. reason why any, yeah, yeah. You no reason anyone should expect that card to work with anything by that time point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that kind of uh, sort of leads us on to this question from Paul Calavata. What improvements over the footage of GTA 6 we saw in the revealed trailer do you expect to see in the inevitable PC port a year <laughs> or two after the initial release? Wow. Well, you know, that's an interesting question. But, you know, RT Shadows is the obvious one, I think. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at what Rockstar typically do, you look at Red Dead 2, you look at GTA 1, it was all about taking the existing systems and scaling them up, right? So, you know, level of detail, that kind of thing, imp right. increased precision on post-process mm -hmm. effects. Um, obviously, you know, if NVIDIA wanted to get involved and, you know, make it past face, that would be pretty phenomenal. That is where, that's where I would go. I would hope they would partner with NVIDIA because NVIDIA wants to do these things. They want games to be path traced because, one, it makes their cards look way better. <laughs> like that's why they do it if they want to show a bar graph where the radeon gpu is like at one third the frame rate they really want to get path tracing in that game so i if i i would hope that happens not because i want radeon cards to look bad but because path tracing has as we've shown in at least multiple videos now has a profound effect on visuals even above standard ray tracing because it's not taking as many of the corner being cut essentially that ray tracing 
like single bounce ray tracing needs to do or cached ray tracing needs to do or whatever. So yeah, that, that, that's one of the really cool things and I would like to see that. But other than the things that Rich just mentioned, it's really hard to predict the future since mm-hmm. it's so far from the future now. There could be other transformative technology that comes out between now and whenever that is in the future that could also be integrated that we don't even know about yet. Right. Frame, frame generation did not exist a year ago, almost like a little less than a year ago in a real time form for games. Then it exists okay. all of a sudden. So, you know. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think, you know, going back to the AMD thing, 2026, at that point, you would expect them to have sorted out their deficiency with ray tracing compared to the competition. Because it's not just in, uh, NVIDIA that they're losing against it's intel too you know it's, mm-hmm. it's going to be an important component they're going to be addressing that it's just a matter of 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 when really i think on that one are there any other improvements you'd, you'd like to see You're moving into wishlist territory either well i can't ah wishlist territory okay uh well three years <laughs> for a prospective pc port okay uh three years is a, a very long time in graphics technology especially with the rise of ai and machine learning I don't know, at that point we could have people doing like neural rendering additions to games, things like this, all kinds <laughs> yeah. of crazy stuff. I mean, I think we're, we're, we're probably going to see some of that um, by that point, certainly. So I would not, I'd be reticent to predict what will show up in an extremely high-end and high-budget PC game in three years. I, I would not want to mm. predict that. But I would say, you know... <laughs> you don't want to, but I'm asking you. I don't want to, but yeah, you're asking me to. That's my suggestion, something something new. Uh, and then okay. RT Shadows, I think that's obvious. It's in the engine. Looks fantastic on consoles. Right. Not, you know, we, don't, we haven't seen it on PC, but it looks fantastic. <laughs> Why not add it to the game? One more ray traced effect. Absent path traced lighting, that's probably the next best uh, best thing. Just pile on the ray tracing. Okay, good stuff. Uh, Let's move on to a couple of final questions about GTA 6, uh, which are quite interesting in terms of timing, because if we assume that GTA 6 is happening in 2025 and towards the latter end of 2025, it's kind of like PlayStation 5 Pro territory, uh, which is what a couple of people have kind of picked up on. Um, (laughs) We're going to start with this uh, question from uh, Parvel S. Hi, DF, love the show, exclamation point. Do you think the GTA 6 trailer is captured on PS5 Pro? We assume this is gameplay captured from the target machine, but we don't know which one. When GTA 6 is released in 2025, PS5 Pro is rumored to already be available. And given how high profile release that is, I'm sure Sony had already delivered the dev kit to Rockstar. Given they want to capture the best quality capture do you think they may have used ps5 pro but they can't admit it yet <laughs> since it's not public i think that footage looks too good for a standard ps5 cheers exclamation point well this would be that surely the biggest embargo nda break of all time <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. if they did that unless sony were in on it of course <laughs> um but i think we can safely assume that it's not the ps5 I mean, Alex, uh, you were talking about certain pixel counts that cropped up within um, right. the GTA 6 trailer, and it it kind of falls within expectation management levels for the standard PlayStation 5, I'd have thought. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to reiterate what I said there, I think that 1440p-ish resolution at 30 FPS, we've already seen Unreal Engine 5 titles, which are using a form of, we saw like the Matrix demo. Don't forget, we saw that Matrix demo (laughs) running on your own PS5. That looked pretty similar to what we're seeing here with GTA 5. Would you agree with that? Like, and obviously it doesn't have the Miami aesthetic. It doesn't have a lot of vegetation or anything like that, but there was a lot of crowds of people. There was extreme hardware ray tracing for uh, reflections and gi and there mm-hmm. was also some next gen car tech there like the way the cars deformed was really cool you know there's a and the, and then there's the visuals of the cutscenes. i would totally say we're on par with what we saw oh, yeah that. yeah you know like Outrageous. we've already seen stuff like we've already seen that matrix demo running on your console right in front of you so i don't think this is anything that is too far flung and the internal resolutions on console for that and that older version of unreal engine 5 there you know like in the cutscenes, it, it was, was a little was, bit lower, but it was it was, pre- it was presentable. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff. I don't think this looked anything like 
mind-bendingly different than what I've seen high-end Unreal Engine 5 demos do, basically, mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. I want to say. Yeah, would you, would you concur with that? Uh, yeah, I think when you look at games that we have access to so far that are pushing the state-of-the-art in graphics technology, you know, 1440p, 30 FPS, two ray tracing effects, you know, it seems pretty plausible to me based on what we've seen so far. So I would concur. I mean, some of it's contingent on like, Hey, maybe if they maybe if they introduce some upsampling in there, maybe the resolution goes down a bit internally, but the output looks better or, or whatever. There are some right. mm-hmm. tweak, tweaks around the edges that we might see uh, depending on how the final code arrives. But I think it's reasonable considering that class of hardware. If this was PS5 Pro, I mean, that would certainly suggest a, a different experience altogether for the weaker machines. So I hope it's not. I don't think it's representative of PS5 Pro. Fair enough. Um, but we're staying on the subject. Sorry. This one from sure. HBAO Max. <laughs> I love fav- that setting. One of my favorite Patreon <laughs> user names. It's up there with agonizing vector, vector pay for sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with a PS5 Pro likely to arrive, how could Rockstar enhance the game to take advantage of the hardware? Will there be enough CPU headroom to create a solid performance mode? And uh, this was actually... Uh, it's, it's interesting because there are a number of people online who claim to have knowledge of... Uh, the APU that's going to be within PlayStation 5 right. Pro. Uh, Kepler underscore L2 being one who's basically came out this week and said it's Zen 2 CPU cores with a, a bit of a clock speed increase, which says to me that you're not probably going to get enough extra horsepower to, you know, cut your calculation time in half to make 60 frames per second possible. Assuming, you know, that they're not targeting it already. So I don't think that there would be a performance mode. You could possibly maybe target 40 FPS, but even that, you know, mm-hmm. that's still, you know, a, a significant, you've got to save seven milliseconds somehow, basically. It's not, it's not trivial. Uh, eight even, thinking about it. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, any thoughts on this one, Alex? Let's assume, let's assume, right, based on the rumors so far, that you're effectively getting double the GPU horsepower and maybe some sort of MPU block for, uh, that, that could be used for upscaling. That's a, that's a rumor? Really? That's a rumor. Well, that's the, interesting. The, the, the 60 compute units will okay. indicate that you're getting effectively double. And that's okay, that. about some sort of AI element. Wow, I haven't Possibly. heard that one. That's interesting. That'd be interesting. Uh, you would, uh, if that is true, then, and if there is some AI upscaling, you could get better image quality for that. I think piece. the actual but- rumor, sorry, Alex. So the actual rumor was an 8K performance mode, which is nuts to begin with and possibly missed, you know, you'd want a 4K performance mode. You'd want a 4K performance <laughs> mode. Um, 8K is other than like a 4090 running DLSS or a 4080 maybe running DLSS. It's complete pipe dream. It is. It's so not worth it in any yeah. sense. It's mm-hmm. it's for boxes. It's not for real people who play games. Um, so in light of that, I would say don't say it's 8K, but if there's this, if there is really this AI unit, greater, greater image quality, uh, the one thing that Rich already said is that if it is still Zen 2, no amount of higher clocking is going to make Zen 2 double its current performance. And if the game is targeting 30 FPS on the base consoles and is going to be filling up as much of that CPU time as possible, which sounds like what would Rockstar would do, um, then I would imagine that would have trouble getting up to a, a really great 60 without compromises. Now, technically, there could be enough CPU uh, increase. Like, what if they increase the clocks by like 33% or something like that? You know, like one gigahertz on top of what it already is. Then, with, you know, 33% more IPC per core, uh, and you turn down some graphical settings maybe you could start getting closer there like because it wouldn't it wouldn't be like a straight just like xbox one x thing or no Mm. xbox one x is a bad maybe example of that it's it wouldn't be like the cross gen thing where we saw where you could just run the previous game flat out Mm -hmm. at 60 completely fine it would have to require a compromise to do that i think Mm, yeah 30 percent was basically what the pro delivered is cpu wise in terms of a clock boost over the yeah. base unit yeah um do you have any ideas Oliver, on this you know my gut feeling is it would simply be a you know a cleaner presentation well the ultimately. obvious 
obvious place to go with this is to say, well, what if they used uh, FSR three? You know. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. Uh, uh, from thirty uh, to sixty. From not so good, 60? maybe. Maybe yeah. questionable. Uh, but you know, who knows? Uh, who knows? Um, I, I, I think on the, on the CPU front, to certainly to run the game uh, traditionally or conventionally, probably not going to be there. You know, when, if we're talking about let's say Zen two at four gigahertz, which I think would be reasonable considering, you know, how you optimize the substrate for different architectures, I think it's not going to be a super high clock CPU. That's not not probably not likely. So, mm -hmm. you know, Zen two at four gigahertz is not going to really give you that um, give you that performance uplift. Presuming the game is pushing systems hard at thirty, you're not going to get sixty out of a PS five Pro. I couldn't imagine. No, I don't think so either. But you know, who knows? Who knows? We just don't know at the moment. We've had one trailer to look at. <laughs> yeah. Certainly ind indicative of what they're My aiming gosh. for, which is super ambitious, I'd say. And, you know, the, the concept that they've got out there and said, here's trailer one. Well, let's wait for the other trailers because I'm sure they're going to be fantastic and mm -hmm. probably even more illuminating. Uh, I guess the, the sort of slightly frustrating thing from a journalistic perspective is that Rockstar don't really like to talk about their technology. Um, it's very rare that you actually see any kind of disclosure mm -hmm. um, in, from from their developers, which I think is a real shame, but but it is what it is. Yeah. But obviously, when new material emerges, we'll be all over it, <laughs> rest assured. Okay, so I think that's going to do it in terms of answering the key questions that people have been asking us about Grand Theft Auto 6 since the trailer dropped, and of course, addressing all of those supporter queries as well. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please do, as usual, like, subscribe, share, ring the bell for those notionally instant notifications, and get involved with the DF supporter program. And uh, yeah, uh, pretty awesome stuff happening there. Early access, high quality video downloads, lots going on there. And yeah, don't forget our merch store too, store.digitalfoundry.net. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.